John here, guys, and today we're talking about how the price of the HD Zero goggle has just fallen from $600 down to $495. That's right, prices are slashing on every SKU throughout the lineup, but there's a lot of changes coming your way. And if you have a pre order already on the way and you haven't received your goggle and you're thinking, oh my god, did I just get ripped off? No, the answer is no you'll actually be getting in the form of store credit the difference between the price that you paid and this price for you to be able to use in the HD Zero store. So now instead of just getting a goggle, you'll be able to get a goggle as well as a VTX or a camera or whatever for free. So really exciting news right here. Now though, this is kind of the drone economic series. So let's talk a little bit about what that means for the community, for this technology, for the company. Because of this decision, at least for the time being, these goggles will not be offered at retailers because the price is so low, there's not enough margin for both HD Zero and the retailers to make money. So you're gonna need to buy them from HD Zero Direct. Now there's going to be a warehouse shipping directly out of China as well as one shipping from California inside the US. So once stock does start to become available, hopefully you won't have to wait for that shipping for so, so long because there'll be some of them available to snag up quickly. Now, when Walksnell did something similar, they started slashing prices, they started lowering the price of the VRX module unit uh, to <laughs> unreasonably low levels. I actually didn't think that that was going to be a good long-term indication of the health of that system and had to question whether it was going to be around. So when HD Zero does it, does that kind of mean the same thing? I don't think that it does, but I'm trying to be objective. I don't really think that three systems will survive this round of HD wars. And if I had to pick two, I feel like the Walksnell system is too similar to DJI V1. So I think most people are going to pick the DJI V2 with these goggles two and the O3 unit, or they're gonna pick HD zero. Or if you're like me, you're just gonna have to have both till you figure out which one wins. But I'm personally not gonna have three. And so I'm picking these two. Uh, but somebody that picked Walksell could easily say the same thing about HD zero. It does have some limitations. If I was a new user and I only had budget to pick one technology to go, with and move forward there's pretty compelling reasons to go with each one of these um, if i did have to fly analog as well like for tiny loops or something i 100 percent would be getting the hd zero solution because that does have the cleanest and nicest hd solution if i wanted to use this also for gaming or watching anything i would be picking the hd zero because of the hdmi input and output functionalities if i wanted to record my own commentary i'd be using hd zero you can see i have my microphone that it lives on here now pretty much all the time so i can get clean audio when i'm flying but if i wanted range penetration or comfort or better build materials or better development support or a variety of other things related not just to the company and the people involved but to the technology I'd have to pick DJI with DJI you kind of pick it and you just wait to see what they give you with HD zero you're really involved being a part of this beta testing uh, time frame has been really fun because you can actually go provide your feedback to the development teams as you're doing it and they're making changes and new firmware versions and it's very easy to upload that firmware you just put it on the SD card and then go to update in the menu and flash it and then boom you have the new features that you asked for just sometimes a few days or even a few hours beforehand uh, like I said in a previous video we're going to the night spot with one firmware <laughs> providing feedback as we were flying there and just a couple hours later on occasion they would have a new thing for us to try before we even left and we could pop it in try it on the fly in the field that's how responsive it has been working on this as a beta tester and i really didn't think that i was going to be doing too much testing so for so much as reviewing but even i was able to notice some things provide feedback on some things receive and get the fixes from some things so immediately and being a part of that process has been fun so i do understand that it's going to be really nice for everyone to get this um, for cheaper but do you have to worry is the system going to be a long 
is the system going to be around long term? That is something that you should be concerned with, that everyone should be concerned with any time you put your money down for any of these systems. And as far as I can tell, it is going to be around for a while. The user adoption has been high. I think this is going to help get it in more people's hands, but it also could be an indication of a lot of things, man. I really was negative on when Voxnell started doing it. But I think at this point, everyone is pricing very aggressively. Voxnell is, even DJI has very low cost options because you can get the previous gen goggles which still work with all the latest units for extremely cheap now. So I think um, goggle pricing just has to come down and this is an indication of that, maybe not an indication of low strength in the market. Now, will this isolate them from the FPV retailers, right? Because if Piroflip and GetFPV and Race Day Quads and all the other big shops, Amazon can't carry this, will they continue to carry the cameras and the BTXs and all, and all the other accessories? I was discussing it with uh, my wife who's worked as a buyer for different industries before and I don't know if retailers are being given the opportunity or the to stock this even if they have to sell it at a loss it's not inconceivable that you would have a, a low price leader or a cost leader being sold on shelves that did cost retailers um, very 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 low margins or maybe no margin at all if it's something that they thought was going to be able to sell a lot of accessories. In other words, if I was buying this from one of those shops that I just mentioned, where I also add the rapid fire and the antennas and a couple of video transmitters and a couple of cameras, and if they could make back some of that margin on all the other products, then maybe it would all be a happy solution. And I know most of us prefer to order from the retailers because we already know that we're going to get that product very quickly uh, with just a couple of days of shipping. I know I personally prefer to do that just because of shipping times for the majority of the time. It's not going to work like that for this, at least for the time being. And if they can't sell the whole solution top to bottom, are they going to continue to stock these on the shelf? Um, is HD Zero equipped to be able to handle not just manufacture, not just development, not just product and bug fixes, but also distribution uh, I think we can't really underestimate the value that the large and small FPV retailers provide to the community and so we got to find a way to get them engaged hopefully soon if we really want this to continue to grow and to be strong but for now I'm really enjoying flying both analog and HD zero on these goggles um, but starting tomorrow my next gen DJI content starts to drop when I got both of these goggles, I ordered the HD Zero long before, but I actually got these in earlier. And I didn't even care about these DJI goggles. I was so excited for HD Zero. Uh, but after getting them and using them, I've been a little more excited to actually fly the DJI system. The image is just so breathtakingly beautiful. So that coverage starts tomorrow. HD zero is for the people that can use it. The people that race, the people that want the low latency is the best on the market. It's the most versatile on the market and you get a lot for what you pay for here. This is not nearly as versatile, but man, that system, it's hard to argue with the image in your eyeballs. What do you think guys? Which one are you betting on? Are you like me and don't think you can bet? Do you think that you have to have both in order to truly live as an FPV pilot right now? Maybe it's true. Thanks, guys.